Hello and welcome everyone to another Saints podcast. Of course, podcast being delivered to you for more information for our students, everything we have going on on Seward County Community College. Uh, and we have been, you know, bringing in different programs, bringing in different areas uh, to come and, you know, get you the more, inf- get you more information because we haven't been able to go out as much. So uh, we want you to be prepared and know what we have going on here on campus. Also, don't forget to check in the description. I do have some scholarships to give away still. Yeah, get you set up with a scholarship. How? Well, you have to check in the description of this video and uh, it's really pretty easy. And I got a bunch of scholarships too, so uh, be sure you sign up. Today in the studio, I am very happy to have a program that I've actually I've been wanting to have you guys in here for a while, uh, just to kind of explain um, what uh, what your what your program is, what your department is. I am hanging out with our trio team this afternoon. I have Blanca and Joel. Uh, you guys just want to kind of introduce yourselves and, and let let us know what you do here at the school. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and jump in. My name is Joel Figs. I am the Director of Student Support Services. That is our TRIO program here at the college. Um, a little bit about me, I, I've been at Seward County not quite three years, uh, three years before too long. I've uh, been in higher ed for quite a while, uh, 25 years with uh, 21 of those at the community college level. So I've been around education for some time and uh, just really happy to, to, be, uh, to be here at Seward County Community College. Uh, not with us today is Libby uh, Garcia. She is our program coordinator uh, slash administrative assistant in our office. So she handles the processing of applications and also helps us coordinate some of our activities and um, is in contact with uh, various departments as we put together ideas and activities. So, um, but uh, that's a little bit about me and I'll pass it then on to Blanca. Hello, um, my name is Blanca Castro and I am the TRIO Education Specialist and um, my duties are to help our students um, succeed in their classes. So myself along with other tutors are there um, to help with English, math, science, economics. Um, You guys can bring us your courses and we will do our best to help you guys out. Um, But I've been working here about six years, six years and counting now. Um, I love it. I love the environment. We're here to help you guys. We want to make sure that you guys succeed and that we give you guys all the tools to go on to a four-year university. Um, Yeah. So Blanca does just a fantastic job in working with our tutors and and really meeting students where they're at. You know, whether we have a student coming in that needs help with college algebra or we've got a student that needs help with an arithmetic kind of course, you know, we uh, we have folks in our tutoring center that can that can really match any level. And we've really been pleased. We've been able to uh, get a hold of some of our presidential scholars that have been uh, serving as tutors. So they are our best and brightest folks on campus. And, and uh, they're very uh, relatable, though, too. I mean, they're able to explain things in a way uh, that students can understand and not feel threatened. And so uh, it's been a great experience so far. Very nice. So you guys have, have mentioned tutoring already, but can you just kind of give me an overview of uh, what the TRIO program is? Because I know there, there's just a little bit of confusion in, uh, on that. So just kind of give me an overview of, you know, the student support, uh, student support services and, and tr- the TRIO program as a whole. Sure. Well, we, uh, we work with students that are considered a little bit more at risk. So uh, we are on the hunt, students, uh, well, I'm sorry, for students uh, for our program currently. And uh, we're looking for students that are first generation, which means that neither parent graduated with a four-year baccalaureate degree or students that fall within a lower um, uh, financial demographic or students that are, have received some type of disability service throughout their educational career. Uh, we are funded through the federal government and uh, we're funded to serve 160 students. Right now we're at about the 130 range, so we still have some, some catching up to do before, uh, between now and the end of June, which I think we're actually in pretty good shape because we have some uh, freshman enrollment periods coming up. But, um, you know, one partial way that I explain our office and kind of what we do is that we are a general support network for, for students. Uh, So a student within our program could walk in uh, to our offices and ask pretty much just about any question dealing with education or financial aid or scholarships or transference onto four-year schools or you kind of name it. 
and uh, we're going to be able to guide and direct them and if by some chance we are asked a question which we don't know the immediate answer we will certainly know somebody on campus that does and uh, we take a, take our jobs very seriously and in that case we would walk that person or that student over directly to that person that would be in the know related to that question so cool um, you know we're, we're here to here to help yeah so uh, Joel if, if I'm hearing you right the, the trio program is really designed to help students in traditionally underserved populations succeed while they're in college absolutely I and our, our major goal is to see that students reach their goals and and that is uh, either completing a certificate program or an associate's degree let's say an applied science degree designed to go directly into the workforce or transferable associate degrees designed to transfer on to to other area schools we send a lot of folks to schools like Fort Hayes Wichita State K-State um, Emporia State um, you know and in, in kind of discussing you know when I say general support network you know certainly you know several things kind of come to come to mind for me number one um, academic advising that's one service that we provide uh, we have as I said about 160 students that were funded to serve so I will advise about 60 of those students Erica Espinoza she is our academic specialist uh, I, I'm sorry academic uh, and career advisor uh, she will uh, advise about a hundred uh, we also do career advisement we can help students look into um, you know the numbers of folks that are needed uh, within the United States within uh, various jobs we can look at salary ranges uh, degree requirements things like that um, we also as as Blanca talked about professional tutoring um, you know helping students get to where they want to be academically uh, workshops is something that we also provide throughout the school year we just had a workshop not too long ago on financial literacy and uh, that was actually taught by by one of our instructors on campus that that teaches business type classes and that is for students to do a better job or to learn a little bit more about managing their own finances um, and also you know even at an early age kind of think about investing and thinking about retirement could be many many years down the road but it's all something we kind of have to keep in mind uh, transfer assistance as I mentioned that's also something that we sit down and help students with so uh, for example I might be in my office sitting down talking to a student I might have a transfer advisor available at, at an area for your school we might be talking about that student and kind of what they're missing to make their file complete uh, with our transfer uh, process we are able to print out a waiver basically that enables uh, our trio folks to have their admissions fee waived uh, as they transfer on to that four-year school and that may not sound like a big deal but it, it kind of is in many many ways because admissions fees can range anywhere between 50 and 150 dollars kind of depending on what school you're you're going to also those four-year schools will also have program similar to ours if not our exact program where a student can cross over to that four-year school and continue services there um, you know one thing that has gotten really big and, and we are we have been directed by the federal government to spend more time of course uh, in doing this is spending time with financial literacy and that's that's helping students as I mentioned you know become more familiar with handling their own finances as well as uh, potential investments investing yeah and the, the, so fi the financial literary p literacy piece is great because I, it, I was actually telling a student this the other day it's kind of unfair that um, you know uh, we're talking to high school students usually high school seniors and you know that are coming in to college it's it's almost unfair to ask them you know to, to make that kind of big decision that's you know will impact their lives financially you know and sometimes for even the rest of your life yeah, so that's one of the reasons why we, um, you know, we keep the cost really low at Seward County Community College, and we have these awesome programs like TRIO. So, uh, you guys, uh, uh, Joel, you kind of mentioned it just a, a little bit there, but uh, some of the qualifications. So, how do I qualify uh, so, for the TRIO? Well, program? first of all, uh, a student needs to actually apply to become a part of our, our student support services program. So, there is an application. We have a uh, fillable uh, online application. We also have a physical application that students can can pick up as well um, we 
you know, typically send out the fillable online version, you know, uh, throughout the school year to get it out to folks that uh, we think would, would certainly benefit. We actually sent it out to our entire student population here fairly recently, and that was through our Dean of, uh, dean of Students, uh, Annette's office. So, um, but first generation, that's students, as I mentioned, that, uh, that neither parent had completed a four-year baccalaureate degree or students that fall within a, a lower financial demographic or students that have received disability services. About 67 to 70 percent of our folks are, are qualifying as coming in as both first generation and of lower income. You know, and, yeah. and I, I think back to really kind of what got me working in higher education in the first place, and Blanca will probably agree to this, you know, I, I really feel, I feel that we are called to help people, you know, and I think, I think back to some of the, the, perhaps some of the bad decisions that I made early in my, early in my own educational career, or, or some, you know, kind of missteps that I maybe made along the way, and if we are able to save folks from making those same, uh, or you know mistakes or, or taking those wrong turns. I mean that's that's what we're here to do. You know, and uh, I wake I wake up every morning and I'm I'm looking forward to getting to work to help people. And I'm sure Blanc is mm -hmm. the the same yeah. way. Yeah, it's definitely a calling to want to come to work and help out these students. And most of all, like Joel s uh, stated, uh, we really don't want these students to make the mistakes that we did. You know, especially in education, uh, in life, uh, career wise. We just want to make sure that you guys are on the right path and that you guys have been informed of you guys making the best educated educated decision for your life. I think that's that's one thing that's also really helpful for students to realize is that you know uh, Blanca is she's finishing up her her, um, uh, her four year baccalaureate degree or bachelor's degree in the spring, which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, very nice. I, I completed a, a my master's degree back in 1993 so so quite a while back so I mean we have spent time sitting in the uh, sitting in the chairs or spent the night studying or <laughs> taking tests or writing papers or yeah. you know doing assignments so we know what it's like when we're talking to students about you know having to to step up and and really get after it yeah the discipline the time management um, that's why we offer our workshops that way our students uh, become educated and how to uh, live a better life through our workshops. So um, how often do you guys have uh, your, the TRIO students made? So everybody that's in the program, and you, you have workshops that go all the time. And I, 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 you, you guys' office is right by mine, and I, you guys have stuff going on all the time. So um, how often do your students usually meet in the TRIO program? Well, it kind of depends. I, I mean, we, this has been kind of a strange year this last year. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I – that I like about our setup is that we, we try to have a, a, a pretty, pardon the lingo, a pretty chill environment where students can come in and sit down, they can work on homework or other projects actually in our office if they want to. Uh, they can just come in and socially interact with us or they can pop in and talk to Blanca or, you know, I, we try to be uh, very non uptight, I guess is, <laughs> is a yes. good way to put it. We like to make uh, it comfortable for our students, so that's why we like to host our uh, food events. I mean, it's all educational, but for the most part, we do like to make it fun. Uh, we like to make it social. We still like to give the students that community, uh, community college environment, you know, and uh, sometimes, especially with COVID, it's really hard for our students to uh, socialize now, you know, so. We try to do our whole social distancing, but we also still try to um, be social, you know, but I don't know. It, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can to give our students that two-year experience, you know. Yeah. It's, it's difficult right now, but uh, we can do it. <laughs> yeah. well, so we do try to meet like twice, twice a year. We, we try to do a, so what are called meet and <laughs> greets. That's where students can, can pop in. If a student, if one of our students or even one, one of the if a non-trio student is hanging out in the academic building um, and they walk by and they smell food, that means that we're probably serving chili or walking tacos or ice cream or pie or, or some kind of food. And part of the reason that we do that is that it's a way for us to attract students to stop in and talk to us. So we can kind of check in on them to make sure that they're doing well. 
but also a way for us to reach out to students that are not in the program. So if somebody comes in, they're picking up some chili, we, we might say, well, hey, you know, John, make sure you pick up an application. Go ahead and let's fill that out right now, and then we can follow up with them. So it's a, it's a very uh, comfortable way to get to know students. And as far as workshops, it kind of depends, um, you know, on, on what we do. We try to plan far out if we can, although with our COVID situation, it's been a little, little bit different. Uh, we are planning some trips to area four-year mm -hmm. schools that Blanca will um, get set up here before too long, um, before we get, you know, uh, once I, you know, once we get into April, we'll be taking some trips uh, where she will take groups of students to those schools and our students will meet with admissions representatives from those schools, to talk scholarships, financial aid, admissions, academic advising, you know, all, all of that type of good thing. Yeah, and if you guys uh, go by our TRIO office, uh, there should be a sign-up sheet here before too long. Um, my plan is to probably go ahead and uh, put out a list of the universities that we have here in Kansas, and you guys can go ahead and sign up, and we can start making and planning our trips to those universities. Very, very nice. So um, it's it, it's a support network for students there. I mean, not, not only is there a bunch of food and, uh, you know, edu educational <laughs> advising, academic advising, uh, financial literacy, I mean, there's all sorts of great things that go on into that TRIO program. Uh, my next question is, uh, d does it cost anything for the student? And what, what kind of responsibilities does a student have in the TRIO program? Well, there is no cost to join our program. I mean, as I said, that we are a federally funded grant program, so all of the money that we receive uh, uh, from the feds is to run the, the whole program. That's salaries and program costs, ex you know, and other expenses. Um, I'm sorry, Eric, what was the second part of your question? J just, uh, you know, what kind of uh, responsibilities does Okay, does responsibilities. Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, we require, we want them to remain, uh, you know, moving forward. So they need to, they need to maintain a, at least a 2.0 GPA, you know, and a um, satisfactory academic progress uh, rate of at least, uh, you know, 67%. So uh, to keep them, a to keep them eligible to receive financial aid. So, and that SAP, that satisfactory academic progress, that's of the classes that are enrolled in at the beginning of the semester, a student completes at least 67% of those. Yeah. So if a student were to come in and enroll in um, 12 hours and for some reason have to drop a couple classes throughout the semester, then their satisfactory academic progress percentage would be 50%. So it has to be at least 67% to remain in good standing for financial aid reasons. Yeah, and, and if, you're, if, uh, if you're watching this right now, you're a student or you know educator, you're watching this right now and I need more information on satisfactory academic progress. You can get a hold of Joel or uh, the financial aid department, and they can kind of help you uh, get a little more guidelines on on uh, on SAP. So I, that's a big one. It's a big one around campus. So, um, all right. So I think y we we've just about covered everything. Um, and you know, students can qualify uh, pretty much all. They need to come pick up an application from you or apply online. You can go to the website sccc.edu, and uh, they. Y they qualify for being first generation um, e economically. Or was how would how would you put that, Joel? Just kind uh, of. In I I would say uh, financially um, qualifying of a of a lower financial demographic, basically a lower income, yeah, basically. Income. And what we do is, yeah. um, you know, on the application we do ask for what's called taxable income, and uh, we're able to actually go over to walk over to our financial aid office and get that information if someone has applied for financial aid. Now, if a student hasn't applied for financial aid, uh, then they're going to need to actually provide some documentation, such as uh, taxes, showing what that was. And so what we're looking at, you know, whether a student is a dependent student or independent student, I mean, if they're dependent upon someone else for their, um, you know, being able to make it uh, financially, then it's going to be based on that on that person's financial uh, records. But uh, as an independent student, and that's typically someone who's um, you know over 24 years of age, has a child. You know, there are some things that they have to um, have uh, happen or be a part of for to qualify as independent. But then that would be based upon their own personal information. 
So, and, and really we have students that come in that are 18 and uh, we've got some 50 year olds and I'm sure we've got, you know, a couple that are past 50 and not that 50 is old because <laughs> non-traditional you know, yeah. non-traditional <laughs> students non-traditional yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah I mean uh, it's it's a it's a great environment because as I said a student can pretty much walk in and ask us about anything and and uh, we should know the answer and if we don't we'll take them to where they need to go yeah we'll find that answer yeah we'll get back to them yeah, and uh, if you are, if you're a student and you're and you're coming to Seward County and, and you're wondering whether or not you can qualify for the TRIO program, more than likely you will. Uh, I think just about anybody in our outreach area, most of the schools in uh, Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle, so I th most of our, our schools in this area, will students will qualify uh, for the TRIO program. So, uh, Joel and Blanca, anything else before we kind of wrap up this afternoon? I don't think so. I thank you very much for having us come in, and I just want to reach out and and help people the best way that we can so absolutely so if you are needing more information on trio want to pick up an application uh, want to get with um, joel and blanco or you know Libri or erica whatever they're back around um, i'll put that contact information up on the screen here in just a few so uh, feel free to get get those numbers that email address uh, you know hit them up with that email give that number a call and they would love to have you in their trio program all right, guys, I think that's about it. So we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. And we'll see you next time as well. Thanks.